But yeah, the resolution up to 25 to 30. Of doing it, and then it just fell off the radar screen, and then we brought it back. Finance the budget, right? Because we looked, we actually, before we brought it back, we did sort of an analysis. Calling the 7 p.m. public hearing to order. If anybody is here for TP and Z, it is in room 400. Just as a okay. Uh, this is a public hearing uh, ordinance amending parking restrictions. Roll call, Ms. Lebrell. Mr. Barnes. Present. Ms. Cantor. Here. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Fay. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Winograd. Here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Thank you, Ms. Lebrell. We'll start with a presentation from the town. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I'll invite our Director of Community Development, Mark McGovern, to co come forward and make a presentation. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. I apologize for my voice. I, I'm a little, little hoarse today. Um, but good, good evening. Uh, Mark McGovern, Community Development Director. Um, as many of you know, we, uh, <laughs> thanks, Pat. Uh, we started uh, working with the neighbors who are here tonight in, this, in the neighborhood known as West of Center, as we call it. The area of uh, Arapaho, Woodrow, 
Four Mile, Ellsworth, Lower LaSalle back in uh, 2016 uh, when uh, there was an ordinance that was submitted to the council um, related to density in the center, which was ultimately withdrawn. Uh, we were tasked with working with the neighbors um, on an initiative. Uh, they worked with us very closely for many months um, on an outreach campaign um, that resulted in um, some guiding principles for the center. Uh, one of those principles was to manage traffic and parking to reduce impacts on the surrounding neighborhoods of the center. Um, that led ultimately to our incentive zoning ordinance. Um, and when that was completed, the neighborhood asked the town to continue um, uh, <clears throat> working with the neighborhood on other issues uh, beyond that of the uh, zoning regulations and some of the things that are impacting um, their neighborhoods, and in particular, on-street parking and late-night parking. And so um, and fast forward to 2018 now, uh, we began working uh, with the neighbors, um, and we, uh, we had a bit of a negotiation over time, a lot of compromise in terms of what we thought uh, could work for them, what they were seeking as a means of reducing some of the negative impacts to late-night parking. And that late night parking was generally a um, combination of employee parking as well as um, patron, park, patron parking, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what we settled on were two uh, sort of major recommendations, uh, one of which um, can be implemented through uh, the town manager as legal traffic authority, but an, the other required an ordinance, which is what you have before you tonight. Um, the material that was discussed both at the Community Planning Committee and the Public Safety Committee um, was included in your council package and it has uh, some maps that show what the existing conditions were as well as uh, what's being proposed as the two major initiatives of this, of this um, project. Um, one would be uh, eliminating on-street parking on certain blocks altogether. Um, and so you have a map showing um, some red areas on uh, Woodrow, Ellsworth, LaSalle, and Pelham. Uh, which parking would only be allowed on one side of the street. Um, on the other side of the street, it's recommended that parking be prohibited at starting at 11 o'clock. Um, and uh, we presented this to uh, CPPS in May, um, and it was at that point that the uh, Corporation Council uh, realized that we would need uh, an ordinance to provide the authority to the legal traffic authority to implement the other aspect of our uh, proposal. Um, in looking at that, uh, it was also realized that the existing OMIT process for uh, the police to allow parking after 2 a.m. was never included in the town code. So the proposal before you um, addresses uh, the issue of no parking after 11 o'clock um, on a street designated by the local traffic authority. Um, so our, our feeling is this is a good uh, first step in addressing the issues that were brought uh, to the town uh, by this neighborhood. Um, and we're looking at it as, as a pilot of sorts. Um, we're hopeful that it will work. We have reason to believe that it will be helpful. I think you'll hear from the residents tonight about that. Um, and uh, we also realize that as it, once the ordinance is, if the ordinance is approved, the town manager would have the authority to make tweaks as needed. So we can see what works, what doesn't, and if and if we have some stumbles, we can we can rectify that. We also have a number of neighborhoods also looking at this very closely because they're interested in the same thing. Um, that's mainly some of the streets, parallel streets, uh, north of Brace Road. So uh, we have an opportunity if 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 this works in this limited area to uh, determine on a case by case basis, working with residents whether or not it's uh, a, a, an option for them as well. Mark, could you cover the business outreach that we conducted uh, as well as sure. our research with uh, the Main Street organization? Uh, yes. So um, Kristen Gorski is here, our economic development specialist. Uh, she went door to door on uh, both LaSalle um, and Farmington Avenue um, and spoke with the management in almost every shop or restaurant on those two streets that potentially have either employees or customers parking um, in, in the neighborhood. Um, and she got a lot of feedback. It took quite a lot, a lot of time to, to go through that over probably a two and a half to three week period. Um, she heard sort of um, pros and cons. She heard some, uh, some liked it, some, some didn't. Um, we heard from many uh, shop and restaurant owners that they don't want to manage parking for their employees. Um, they just assume it work out sort of on its own. 
Uh, it was also an opportunity for Kristen to remind them of the incentive parking program that was established for employees, uh, discounted parking at the town center garage. Um, at that point in time, there were about uh, 21 or 22 uh, businesses that had taken advantage of that program. Um, since the outreach, another you know, three have signed up, and about 35 to 40 individuals have you know, monthly passes in that garage as opposed to parking elsewhere. Um, in terms of uh, uh, research that came up at the public safety meeting, uh, we looked at the issue from the point of view of whether or not we could identify a comparable community that has a center as vibrant as what we have in the center that's up against single family uh, homes. We, we didn't come up with um, any. We contacted um, Connecticut Main Street to get their input, see if they thought there was a comparable um, downtown that we could look at. They, they didn't have an option. So we admit that this is a, a unique approach to what we think is a, a unique challenge. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Hart. Um, are there Bless questions? You. Bless you. Are there questions for Mr. McGovern or comments? Oh, Mr. Sweeney. Mark, thank you for all the work you've done on this. Um, <clears throat> so I just have a quick question. So with regards to surveying of the businesses, which businesses do we have that written down, like their comments? Do we have their feedback? How do we know who didn't like it? Were the smaller ones, the bigger ones? I could ask Kristen to answer that. She, she didn't take down the data. Um, uh, she didn't do a survey per se. She went in, had a conversation um, with the different managers or owners, provided a copy of the ordinance, I think maybe provided a copy of the map. Um, and she can talk specifically, answer your questions about that. Thank you. Good evening, Kristen Gorski, Economic Development Specialist. Uh, so what Mark said, as I went into the businesses, I handed out the information, I talked about the proposed changes. Um, I did not write down specifically everybody who either did or didn't have um, were in favor of the ordinance. However, some specific comments I did write down on a spreadsheet. I do have that. Um, I think that primarily the restaurants seem to be most affected or would be most affected by the ordinance because they have larger staffs. Um, they also perhaps uh, aren't at the same uh, hourly wage, so they would be a little bit more affected by any uh, changes. And was the Chamber of Commerce consulted in this? Yes, they were. Yes, as well as the West Hartford Center Business Association. Okay. And who comprised of the the well, who is comprised of the community group outside of the folks that are here tonight? Oh, it was made up of residents and then staff, staff from planning and zoning, engineering, public works, parking, and the police department. But not the businesses that be impacted by it. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Dodge. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just brief, as, as far as the outreach to the neighborhood, what was kind of the, the geographic extent of that? Was it just the streets directly bordering town center? or or Because one concern I have looking at the current plan that you, that, that you guys have for the restrictions would be that instead of pushing parking inward, we might end up pushing it outward. Right. Um, and so that's why I'm just curious, uh, kind of how far out your outreach went, and anybody, whether anybody raised that concern. Um, yes, that, that was a particular issue. Um, the most recent working group was um, established following a, a larger parking meeting that reviewed some of the proposals we were considering. Um, and so we asked for volunteers, but we also did try and balance it out based on where they lived. Um, the, big, the big question really is whether or not Woodrow is far enough west. So we made sure we had um, a resident, at least one resident from Four Mile Drive Road, uh, understanding that the parking could move that way. You're absolutely right. What we do want is the uh, on-street parking to go to off-street lots in the district and not spread out. So we, uh, we looked at the timed walk. We looked at input from residents. Um, and we acknowledge that if that were to happen, that would be an example of a tweak we could make. We have the same issue going southward. You know, so we're, um, we go uh, on certain blocks on Woodrow, but not all the way down to the boulevard, for instance. So um, it was kind of a, an area based on <coughs> what, where we were seeing cars already, because um, we were doing counts. Parking was doing counts um, at different times of the evening over the course of several months, um, as well as 
firsthand experience from the residents. Um, and I think obviously the impetus for this is the issues regarding West Harvard Center, and I think you described it as kind of a pilot program. There's other streets that might be interesting at Brace Road. Are there other neighborhoods in town that have expressed any interest in this? Are there because it would it would apply townwide, correct? Well, um, no, it wouldn't apply townwide. It would only apply in designated streets designated by the town manager. Well, well I guess what I mean is the town manager could do it anywhere in town. Correct. So the only other area, well, there are two, there are two areas. And the one that, that come to mind, one is that I mentioned um, uh, Clifford, Ardmore, just north of Brace Road. There have been a number of residents who have contacted us, and we've talked to them about where we are in the process, and I would expect that they're going to be interested in um, at least evaluating something similar. The other I'd say is, uh, is Park Road. Uh, that's a little bit of a different challenge, though, because we don't have off-street parking on Park Road. But historically, uh, commercial district parking has gone you know, uh, north and south of Park Road in different areas, and, and, and we do get complaints about um, resident patron parking on those streets. And so if, if we did expand this to another neighborhood, not in West Hartford Center, if we expand to Elmwood or Park Road or something, would you imagine... I mean, there's there's no provision in the current statute or or, or dra ordinances. It's drafted for say notice or outreach to the neighborhood. How would you envision that happening? Would there be outreach to a local street where we were contemplating this? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I first off, I think we'd only contemplate it if there's a significant number of people come forward and identify a problem, um, and that's generally the basis upon which we work when we're dealing with uh, issues in the right of way, ma mainly traffic, whether or not a stop sign or a stoplight might be needed, um, whether or not people want sidewalks, things like that. We usually work on a sort of a, whether a formal or informal petition basis. If there's a demonstration of, of interest, then we would, would form, a, form a group similarly to what's been done over the last few years west of the center. So um, absolutely, uh, if I think we would work with, with uh, local stakeholders, um, and then any decisions would be um, Decisions wouldn't come before there were significant public information meetings and opportunity to meet with any residents who would be affected. Uh, we would typically, any change to the right of way, also send direct mail to. Uh, yeah, I, I know, I imagine we'll probably be hearing from, from some folks tonight. Were there, was there anybody who objected as, as this outreach happened? I know you mentioned some of the businesses had concerns. Were there any residents who, who had concerns? I don't, I don't think we received any concerns about the proposal as it is now. We most certainly um, received requests to do more, which we felt we weren't able to do. And I think the best example of that was there were several residents who were interested in um, resident-only parking. And we talked with the neighborhood about um, the administration of that and how the town wasn't prepared to go that far. Um, so I'd say that's probably the, the closest complaint we had was that you know, some wanted more done. Okay, Mr. Dodge, uh, Ms. Fay. Thank you, Ms. Cantor. Um, this is great. This is a quality of life issue for our residents that we've heard about very much. And um, I think it's terrific that you're addressing it. The spread creep is gonna be an issue for sure as it pushes out to other residential streets. I, I know parking is a very big concern from folks, either they don't want to pay, they don't have the means to pay, and it's affecting the shop owners and um, other businesses that there's not enough parking or enough reasonable cost parking. So so as we do this, which I'm supportive of the neighborhood, um, quite frankly, and I think it's, it, like I said, it's a quality of life issue, what can we do to help some of the businesses still continue to thrive and make make assurances for their people who are working there that they have a safe, secure parking area that's accessible. I know we have the garage, which is terrific. I think that's a really good solution for now. I really do. Um, but for some of the people who carry lots of stuff, it's, it's, I, I hear from the businesses mostly, uh, they call me a lot, you know, to go all the way over to that garage, it's, it's, it's cumbersome and it's hard for them to carry their supplies and their materials and this. So what can we do to alleviate some of the business folks concerns about parking. I, I understand people want passes and this and that, and we're not ready to address that, nor can we right now um, due to finances. But can we do something for the business community to either assure that people can 
come to their shops and, and have parking that's not so expensive. Um, you guys used to have, I, I forget what it was, a half an hour free or something if you parked in the lot. I don't know if that still exists. Or something for the owners, actually, to, make, to encourage them to, to still be part of the center, which is very vibrant and important. Well, I wish John Phillips and Brooke Nelson were here right now <laughs> since they run parking. Um, but I'll just take a stab at the fact that we've had a paid parking environment in the center for decades. And uh, those rates haven't been changed in a long time. I think it was contemplated recently, and they haven't changed. So I think that's, that's one thing. Um, for employees, we've developed a program in a central garage. The town also has it's a, a workforce parking program for those working in Blueback Square for uh, the two garages in Blueback. Um, the, the, the issue is, is in parking is how do you have the right sort of parking for that parker? And so what this tries to address is longer-term parking, people who are staying three, four, five hours, or perhaps an eight-hour shift. And those are the sort of parkers you want in an off-street environment. Um, I don't think the issue is so much during the day when someone might park for an hour, walk into the center, and come back. The bigger issue is someone who's parking for six or seven hours and coming back to their car at two in the morning and being loud or engaging in behavior that doesn't meet community standards. So um, I think we continue to work with, um, with the businesses through Kristen's outreach, trying to come up with new programs where possible, um, and we, we do our best with that. But it is a difficult issue. I, I, there isn't one thing I think that we're missing that we can do that's going to be really a boon for, for all the businesses. I wanted to add one thing. So as it pertains to the town center garage program, um, so the outreach was actually really great. And I actually ended up doing uh, more businesses than just Farmington and LaSalle. I spread on to South Maine as well. Um, so although many of them had been told about this program in the past, um, a lot of people, either it was a new owner or a new manager. So it was just reiterating the fact that that program existed. Uh, many of who you know thought it was the first time that they were hearing about that particular program, and I think that that's why in the in the last couple of weeks we've seen three new businesses sign up for that program. So just continued outreach, I think, is. is cool. Thank you, Ms. Faye, and I do want to thank Ms. Gorski for Ms. Gorski for um, her tremendous work on this. It was a long time in, make, in the making, and it was a lot of hard work. Ms. Williams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, and, and to share the mayor's uh, sentiment, uh, thanks, Mr. McGovern, Ms. Gorski, and of course, I think Mr. Dume was involved in this as well. Balancing all the interests is really difficult uh, because a lot of people care, and they should. Um, but one of the things that I also thought was part of your analysis was that uh, once it gets to be around 11 o'clock, there's another wave of patrons to the center area. And, and at the same time, by that time, we also have capacity at our parking areas, including the one around Town Hall, which is open to the public. Um, isn't that true? That's yeah. part of the thought process here? Absolutely. In the data collection we did, we, uh, it was twofold. We, we counted cards on street, but we also counted um, spaces that, are avail that were available at the Arapahoe lot, Farmington lot, and Brace lot. And so absolutely, uh, at 10 or 11 o'clock, there's a, there's a turnover, and uh, there are spaces available. Um, it comes at a, at a cost. Um, but um, those are the parking spaces that are designed for those who are coming in um, to go to the restaurants later in the evening. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, Mr. Hart, we had talked about the paid parking and the benefit to the businesses and the community with paid parking. I just want to know if you would like to review that for a minute because that 11 o'clock component is important. So we also right, use that funding for... Yes, I'd be happy to do that, Mayor. And, and uh, Mark, if you'd like to add on, feel free. So we, we have a, a paid parking system. It's uh, important for a few key reasons. Uh, number one, we rely on a shared parking system um, as opposed to allocating spaces to specific businesses. So turnover is important to us. It's important to our businesses. That requires enforcement. Enforcement comes at a cost. Uh, you can pay for it through user fees like we do. Some communities establish business improvement districts, 
where the businesses in that <coughs> district will pay an additional an additional tax that covers parking and other services. We also use the parking revenue that we take in to help maintain the center. Uh, for example, we do a, tr a daily trash detail every morning. I think it starts at 6.30, 7 a.m. Uh, we do it, we, our parking services staff goes out and does a trash sweep throughout the center, which is very beneficial. Uh, the proceeds also help pay for planters and other infrastructure improvements that, that we need to make. So uh, parking, especially on the scale that we have here, it never comes for free. You know, someone's going to have to pay for it somewhere. Uh, and the option that West Hartford chose uh, decades ago and uh, still continues to work well, in our view, is a paid parking model. Uh, Mark, I don't know if there's anything key you want to add on to that based on your experience in, in Hartford and elsewhere. No, I, I think that's right. I think um, the revenue is, it goes back into the district. I think the other area it pays for too that's worth noting is removing all the snow in the middle of the night. So spaces are kept open um, that next day for shops and restaurants. I think that's critically important. So there's um, access 12 months a year to all the spaces. Um, the key Matt mentioned, it, it, it's turnover. It, it, it comes down to turnover and uh, creating an environment where uh, shoppers and restaurant goers have the expectation that they're going to find a space fairly close to where they're going to go. Not necessarily right in front, but but fairly close. And um, you know, fees are used to to be able to spur that what we call churn at the curb. Thank you. Term of trade, Mr. Sweeney. Sorry. <clears throat> um, so uh, th I guess the the big thing on here that I saw is this number for 11 p.m. Can someone Tell me how we came to the genesis of this number and where, we, how we came there from from two. Well, I think it was a negotiation of sorts in our in our working group meeting, and we we talked about that in a couple meetings whether or not um, it should be uh, 12 or 11. Um, and there were enough members of the neighborhood that felt strongly that 11 was most appropriate. Even acknowledging the fact that, um, you know, they would have guests coming to their homes that might be there uh, past 11, and it could could impact them. So um, it was really came down to a consensus of the group. But, so, but there wasn't a negotiation with the businesses about this time? Uh, no, because that wasn't our directive. Our directive from the council, based on the previous initiatives, was to work with the, with the residents based on the impacts from the commercial district. Mm -hmm. OK. And, and there was, there's no other Miss Bally that has an 11 PM ban? I, I can't say there isn't. I, I don't know. We, we, we looked at whether or not there were sort of similar environments to West Hartford um, in Connecticut, and, and we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't go beyond that. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I really like the, um, the ability for the town to capture as much potential revenue through parking. I think, that's, I think it's very forward thinking. I, I think that's a really good thing to look at. I, I do, I, I am a little troubled with a ban. Um, and I'm a little troubled by the number not being like a scientific number that we haven't, that there's nowhere we've seen this work. We're just kind of settling on that based on negotiation that doesn't involve the business community. And I think that, you know, that's something I think that needs to be considered before we move on something of this, this magnitude. And <clears throat> particularly the language in here, uh, I think to Mr. Dodge's point, specifically allows for the town manager to, at his own discretion, his or her, his own discretion to change it and move it to any part of the community, which for different parts of our community, we have working class folks, we have people that are on different time schedules, um, and specifically in and around the center, you have the people that work there that can't leave at 11 p.m. They're on shift till three, the restaurant closes at two, but they're there till three to close. And I think those are all things that we have to keep in mind. So I just think that um, it would be great to have a little bit more input from the restaurant folks because their their employees are the one that are really facing this, and they're probably the ones that are impacting it. And I I I applaud the folks that are here today, and I think it's great. And I understand that there's a ton of stuff that's happening in your front yard that is things you don't want to see at uh, 1 a.m. or 2, 2 a.m. But I don't think that they're going to be, um, I think it just needs a little bit more of an 
input from the business communities because we're in this place where we're seeing a lot of fluctuation in our own uh, downtown with we have a lot of movement to restaurants and that's taking up a lot of the space and real estate in West Hartford Center. I think we really need to have them at the table for this conversation just because of the amount of input that they have given to this community. Um, so I think it would be um, a little ahead of, ahead of our skis if we don't have them at the table for those negotiations. And okay, I, I, and I, under I understand your point, but that was that's contrary to the directive that we received over the last three years and working with the neighbors. So we, we could certainly go forward on that basis, but that wasn't how we were directed in the past. Okay, fair. Thank you. Mr. Sweeney, your mic. Um, um, okay, Ms. Carrier. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is sort of an offbeat question. Um, so, and, and I applaud your efforts here to please both the residents and businesses. That is a, a challenge, no doubt, and, and your outreach is, is impressive. Um, and, and I think it's important that the residents who have houses there have a, some protection. Uh, because we're not talking about retail, where someone's coming in and buying something. We're talking about drinking and the behavior that ensues because of alcohol. Um, so that's, that's an issue. What happened? So my question is, so I appreciate your efforts here. I, I think it's, it's noble, a noble <coughs> cause. Because um, I don't know how I would feel if someone was, you know, every morning, you know, drinking and stuff there. But anyways, so at one time there were these bicyclists. Because I think that, you know, the, the place is in the lot for these cars that are coming in at 10, 11 o'clock at night, not in front of the residents' houses, but in a, in a lot so they can go back at their leisure and not disturb sleeping families. What happened to those bicyclists that used to bring you around? They were here for a short period and then they left because that could be really ideal. It was a, a private pedicab business. Okay. That Just to bring <laughs> people from the lots to the to the bars. And, well, no, we don't have bars. Restaurants. Sorry. So I think okay. I believe before my time in West Hartford, that was tried and it wasn't before your time. Pedal cabs, it was. No, because I was here. No, you're thinking I'm cycling. Thinking of the no, yeah, no. Oh, you're thinking of the cycling. Uh, yeah, the cycling. With age, so that was bringing um, um, seniors who weren't able to bicycle. No, they, yes. They, I, no. Yes. Hold on a second, Pat. There, there were two programs. Okay. One is a program that Mark is describing, where um, people would give rides on special tricycles really yes. to seniors right that's one oh. thing there's a second thing at the time we implemented blueback sort of as a as an offshoot of that yeah we drafted a very comprehensive set of regulations allowing for pedal cabs based on a couple of companies that expressed interest in trying it uh we we wrote a very long and comprehensive ordinance. Two pedal cab companies started and lasted one season, and we haven't seen them again. But the ordinance is still in place in case anybody in case ever want to wants to do it again. Bring back the pedal cabs. Thank you. I appreciate that. Not just for seniors, for everybody. Thank you. Okay. I think we should take time out to hear from the residents before we ask any more questions. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. so uh, do you have a sign up sheet? Thank you very much. I, well, I'll do it again. I did make one. But if anyone is here for TPZ, they're actually meeting in room 400. This is the town, this is a public hearing for the town council meeting. Thank you. Okay, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, I apologize. Christine Vichera. A name, state your name, and state your name and address uh, for the record, and you have three minutes to speak. Hi, I'm Christine Fischera. I'm at 21 Arapahoe Road. Um, there are many wonderful things about the neighbor, neighborhood that I live in. Most notably are my amazing no neighbors, many of them who are here uh, tonight to support the parking changes on our streets that have been proposed. We all love being able to walk to just about everywhere we need to go to get a book at the library, pick up some groceries, catch a movie, and enjoy lots of great food, while still being part of a tight-knit, caring community. On the flip side, our center neighborhood has been dealing with steadily increasing traffic, practically impassable streets caused by bumper-to-bumper -bumper parked cars, illegally parked cars, getting blocked into our driveways by parked cars, and not to mention 
smashing into a car smashing into a utility pole or we've even had a car that drove through a fence across the front yard up a flight of stairs and onto the front porch of one of our neighbors as a neighborhood we all collectively hold our breath that these somewhat minor accidents will be the worst of what we see along with all these parked cars come their drivers after a night at the bars and clubs in the center, they return to the cars, oftentimes drunk, and this leads to other problems, trespassing, vandalism, fighting, empty alcohol containers and other trash strewn about, vomit on the sidewalks, and on two other occasions that I've witnessed lewd acts happening in parked cars. A little over three years ago, we began voicing these growing concerns to the town council. In response, they formed at the Center Parking Committee and also the Neighborhood Working Group. I'm so grateful that they did, and I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to be part of both of these groups and to be given the opportunity to work in collaboration with town employees and other neighbors over a long period of time to find parking solutions that begin to protect neighborhoods while providing sufficient parking to business patrons. I grew up in the house that I live in now. Back then, the center was used almost exclusively during the day. By 5.30, I could and did roller skate down the middle of my street. That was a long time ago, and the parking signs in our neighborhood are even older than that. They're from an entirely different era when parking regulations were established for an entirely different business center, before there was a significant late night entertainment and drinking in the center. I support the recommendations that came out of the center parking committee. There's plenty of parking available directly in the center, especially later in the evening after 10 p.m. Restricting parking on a few residential streets will not result in a shortage of parking for the patrons of the shops, restaurants, and bars, but it will help to make our neighborhoods a safer, saner place to live in. And on the, another upside, it'll send more parking revenue to the town. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Rebecca London is next, and after that is David Mann. And if you haven't signed up, you're welcome to come and speak. So, Rebecca London, I live at 91 Four Mile Road. So, to your point, Mr. Dodge, I am actually just outside of the radius of the proposed changes. Um, I was very much um, happy to be a part of this process and I support, you know, while I do have concerns that this, that, you know, we might see these sorts of problems begin to extend past this area, I'm very happy to support this knowing that it sets a precedent that the citizens of the neighborhood that borders the center are listened to and involved in the process and that should the concerns you know spread that that there is an avenue for it to be addressed um, you know I am not quite as eloquently prepared as Christine what I would add to her remarks all of which I agree with and support is that this was a very good process um, you know in the time that I have lived walking distance to the center, I have witnessed phenomenal change. Not as much as Christine has witnessed, but, but still an incredible amount of growth. And any time we're part of a community, any time there is growth like this, which, which we all support, right? We live in the center because we want what is here. At the same time, there must be an evaluation system where we continue to talk and discourse and look at what the changes are bringing, what the impacts are, and how we can meet everyone's needs. So again, I would say that this has been a very good process. It's been one that has involved business owners. It's been one that has involved residents. There is no way to meet 100% of everyone's needs. Right, like that, that's just not the standard. The standard is to try to figure out what everyone's needs are and then to implement ways that as many needs as possible can be met. This meets the needs of the center, businesses and employees, and really it's not the employees that as much 
It's the people that are walking through our neighborhood at two o'clock in the morning, inebriated and behaving badly. Those people can pay for parking in the center that is ample and provided for them. It is not impacting business. If they can go to Barcelona and rack up a $200 bar bill, they can pay $5 for parking in a town lot that then benefits our entire community. So to your point, Mr. Sweeney, about business, of course I support the businesses in the center. It's why I live here. Their needs can be met while at the same time meeting the needs of the people that have to live in the houses and want to live in the houses that back up against the center. So again, I am that person that you know lives right on the border of the proposed blocks that we're talking about. I think it speaks again to the process that I was included. And I would just say, you know, once again, that a lot of time and energy went into this. And I think that this is a compromise that everybody can live with and that sets a precedent for meeting future needs as they arise. Thank you, Rebecca. Next person is David Meehan. Uh, hi, my name is David Meehan. I live on 24 Woodrow. And I am this close to just saying I agree with what they said and just go back to my chair, which my wife would celebrate. But, um, but, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. And if I'm going long, she'll play the, the Academy music to get me off the stage here. But um, so I echo everything with what they said. And I think they really didn't end up covering the bases. Um, the only th points I want to emphasize additionally <clears throat> are that there's just there are other members um, on the committee, uh, uh, the, the Falks, um, uh, Benjamin Albert, other members that agree with this ordinance. I support this ordinance. Um, and so in a way, I've been a part of some of these other meetings where it's a little more exciting because there's a little more debate. This one was like, no, we ended up, it, it took a while. Everyone talked about it. it took a couple of years and it was an involved process. And I think um, uh, Mark noted there was folks from, from the police, engineering, public works. There was dialogue with the business community. So this was a thoughtful process. Um, that took some time and negotiation. And I think also what I like what Mark said was, this is a first step. You know, it's, um, it's not, not the final answer necessarily, it's a first step. It's just, just a section near the center. We'll learn from it, we'll, we'll talk about it. And so I think that's, that's what got everyone comfortable. People that had grand ideas for other things, we just said, this is a nice first step. And I think a little bit, the, the thought process between you know, uh, 11 p.m. Is, is a focus point as far as changing that parking timing. I think part of the rationale was, I think as we were mentioning earlier, the, it's that restaurant bar break point. And so um, I was definitely that bar person at a younger age. And so now I'm on the other side of 11 o'clock. And so we just kind of looked around the room and we said, well, that's kind of when that time usually is. And I love the analogy of the $200 bar bill, um, by the way, uh, or $205 bar bill. Bar bill, but um, so that was sort of the the, the thought behind behind it. And again, if it takes if it's 11:05, that's when the person, that employee or whomever is coming over from the restaurant, no one's gonna, I don't think, get in harm's way there. Um, so there was that. Uh, I thought excellent point on capacity. I don't think anyone walks around the center of West Hartford and says, if we, only we could have more parking buildings here. You know, I mean, I think in some ways we feel like there's better uses of some of our existing parking spaces that we have. So I think. That's good to know that the data supports that there is capacity to support those folks that um, are late at night and, and need to have somewhere. And I like the fact that it's close to the center, it's well lit, safe. So that's, again, we want to be mindful of all parties here. Um, and also, I, I want to note, you know, as far as, as, as a Woodrow resident, you know, some of the, again, reasons why we're here are, you know, I don't, you know, when you get to that point where there's the cars on both sides of the road, and you're going down Woodrow Street, you know, we've had, I've seen instances where we, we tried to see um, ambulances trying to get down the street, unfortunately, and they can't. Um, that's not good. And um, I've seen accidents. I've seen people back in. And so, you know, onto other cars just trying to get out. So, and they, they shared some stories as well. So it's just, it's, the safety thing is real. Um, I actually have a video clip from my security camera of a parked car, a pickup truck driving over another car um, at, at two in the morning, and they went for it. I actually was applause their, their tenacity to, um, so, but it was reckless and bad. And, and, and again, that wasn't the, the, the employee of the restaurant. That was the late night person 
who had too much. So anyway, we support it. A lot of folks support it. Appreciate your time. And oh, by the way, one more plug. Todd's not in the room, right? Todd's awesome. Uh, so, you know, uh, and Mark, great to work with as well. It's a very collaborative process. And last but not least, we've already seen action taken from this. At the end of Woodrow, um, that, that, that cuts uh, over to Farmington, they, they broaden the, 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 the space there. So there's less, a little bit less, one less spot, but you can see better now. And as one of the committee members said, he no longer has to tell his kids, hold on when he goes and pulls out <laughs> to Farmington. So that's a nice safety improvement. Thanks for your time. Thank you, David. Is there anybody else that would like to speak to this public hearing that has not had an opportunity to do so? Okay, and just another announcement, TPZ is upstairs if anybody's here for TPZ, and Todd is also upstairs, so he would be here if it wasn't for... Okay, uh, any other comments from council? No? Questions? All right, well, um, nobody else wants to speak, then uh, we will close the public hearing. All right, we have two more public hearings. We're going to start the 715 public hearing, ordinance adopting a revision and recodification of the code of the town of West Hartford, Connecticut, providing a, for code amendments and the repeal of certain obsolete and conflicting ordinances. Roll call, Ms. LeBrow. Mr. Barnes. Present. Ms. Cantor. Here. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Fay. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Winograd. Here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Thank you. Presentation from staff. Mr. Hart. Well, Mayor, actually, I thought everybody in the room was here for this public hearing and not yeah. the previous one. But uh, anyhow, our corporation counsel, Mr. Allaire, or uh, uh, assistant corporation counsel, Newsom, will uh, make a brief presentation on this item. Good evening, Garmin Newsom II, Office of the Corporation Council. The town of West Hartford is required to recodify its code, to amend, uh, to correct, and to delete items that are um, obsolete or not necessary. And uh, frankly, we kind of had failed to do this perhaps in the most timely manner possible. And so we have it now for you to consider. Uh, we did go before committee and make this presentation or make a presentation of this ordinance. Um, it primarily involves making minor corrections um, to the names of particular departments that needed to be adjusted. There were some provisions that simply have not been used. Um, and so we had those, we've marked those for deletion. And there are other things where we attempted to address uh, his, her, and, and put that as designee, making it more gender neutral. Um, but for the most part, this is really a series of corrections, frankly minor, and for the most part, not sub, non-substantive um, edits to the existing code. Thank you, um, Mr. Newsom. I uh, can't imagine how exciting this must have been for you to do. <laughs> You know, in fairness, <laughs> just so that you understand, when I when I first received this uh, assignment from from Corporation Council Allaire, I believe he phrased it as, "This is an opportunity for you to become familiar with Thanks. the code," and it certainly was that and more because I ended up having to read through just about everything. No, so thank you, Mr. Allaire. <laughs> uh, sort of a rite of passage in our <laughs> office. <laughs> this is your, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions for council? No? All right. Uh, is there a uh, sign-up sheet for this? I kind of doubt it, but you never know. <laughs> no, Madam Mayor. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this public hearing? No. This is your last chance. <laughs> okay. Uh, no sign up, and we'll close the public hearing. Thank you very much. And we will go right on to the last public hearing, which is, should be, yep, we're well beyond 725. Uh, this is an ordinance establishing a West Hartford Prevention Council. Roll call, Ms. LeBrun. Mr. Barnes. Present. Ms. Cantor. Here. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Fay. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Winograd. Here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Thank you, Ms. Lebro. Okay, Mr. Hart, I see <coughs> Ms. Rubino Turco is ready. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Having trouble with my mic. There we go. 
Our Director of Leisure and Social Services, uh, Ms. Rubino Turka, will make a brief presentation on this proposal. Welcome, Helen. Thank you. Um, 30 years ago, the Substance Abuse Prevention Commission was established um, by town ordinance to advise the town council on ways to help address the problems of substance abuse in the entire West Hartford population. And over the years, um, it, ha it worked well. There were a couple of times where the ordinance was amended, one in 2000 and again in 2006, uh, 2005. Um, but recently, um, it, it became apparent that it's a bit out of date. Um, the membership is quite large and a bit unwieldy. And there were numerous vacancies. It was really challenging for the town clerk to keep tra track of which seat was filled and new people coming in, which seat are they going to fill? And in addition, we really felt that the um, mission needed to be expanded also to include mental health. Um, and so for that reason, we felt that um, changes, um, it, the best way to address this was to repeal the current one and to replace it with a new uh, council. And so, one of the issues was about um, practical functioning, and the other was about the mission. So first, the mission is really driven by um, the state organization that governs the Substance Abuse Prevention Commission, and that is the State Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. And those two issues are very closely tied. And we receive money from them, and they rely on local prevention councils to um, be in place in the towns that receive funding from them. And so we looked to how do uh, local prevention councils work, what, what is uh, in their mission statements, and so we felt that by adding the words mental health to the mission that we would be able to accomplish uh, that goal, and also to add a seat at the table that was for someone who has a background in uh, mental health um, services. Um, so the um, name change would support um, this evolution. So it would become the West Harvard Prevention Council, and that nomenclature matches what the state uses. They, they use, as I said, local prevention councils. So then we get to the practical part. Um, I've seen lists of uh, more than 20 people on this prevention uh, commission. Uh, Most recently, it was about 17 seats. And we felt that um, right now we, uh, we are recommending about nine seats. And all currently serving members of the prevention commission would have a seat at the new um, council. And that was very important to us that we, we wanted to recommend to you um, that everybody that's been serving um, remains on the board and can continue to participate. Um, we do have a few new members that have um, been solicited either by the Board of Education or by have come to um, on their own to submit names their name for um, uh, no, uh, to be um, recommended by you to be, be appointed. So everyone on the current board needs to be reappointed and we staggered their terms so that they wouldn't all leave at the same time, that they would be in three different groups. The new Substance Abuse Prevention Commission, which is now called the West Hartford Prevention Council, would um, again retain one parent-teacher organization um, represented, representative, um, a member of the Youth Service Bureau would be represented. Um, as you know, we outsource our Youth Service Bureau to the bridge. Um, two school counselors, um, either public or private, from either high school or middle school. And those names would be recommended by the superintendent of schools or by another private school that might have someone to serve. Three professional providers of services, either in substance abuse or in mental health, again, adding the mental health component. And then also two residents who have an interest or an expertise in substance abuse or mental health issues. And this really allows for... Um, a different kind of representation. So we have professionals, we have counselors, we have um, people who are appointed um, by, by virtue of their work to, to be involved, but also we wanted it to be open to members of the public and, and to residents. <clears throat> 
And so uh, th those are our recommendations. Um, the, the impact that this would have, we believe that um, it would have a positive operational impact on the functioning of the organization. Um, it better aligns the membership of this advisory council with its, its expanded mission to mental health issues, and it also improves the management and operation of the council. It would result in a practical improvement in the town clerk's oversight of the advisory council. Um, this commission grapples with important issues that are difficult to discuss, and by keeping the ex officio members, who I didn't name but involved the town a member of the town council and the superintendent's office, as well as um, my office, um, police, um, and uh, health, the health district. Um, having that focus, uh, those people in attendance, will help maintain the focus on keeping our community safe and our community well. And so it's for those reasons that we um, submit this ordinance change and also submit the names to be um, appointed to this council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bino Turkey. I appreciate your work on this. And this was something that was discussed in, in your committee, Beth, right? Yes. Your, yep. Deputy Mayor's committee. So um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Mr. Dodge? Hey, well, Mayor, um, this is actually a question for Mr. Allaire, and I'm just reading through this quickly. Will the ex officio members be voting members? No. Thank you, Mr. Dodge. Well, oh, I, I, I guess my question, does it state that they're not non-voting members? Uh, subsection D, capital D, the very, uh, the last full line shall serve as ex officio members without a vote. This is a pet peeve of mine that goes back to being a legislative attorney, so. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Dodge. Let's see. Um, I forgot to mention, I'm sorry for interrupting, oh, okay. that there are also two <laughs> high school students that would be appointed by the superintendent of schools, um, and they would not be voting members because they're not electors. Right, I remember that discussion. Okay, Mr. Barnes. Thank you. And Helen, thanks for all your work on this. I just have one question with respect to the appointments. Later in our agenda, I think paragraph 10 or whatever it is, we're going to appoint a slate of folks. And I think you just mentioned, I wanted to confirm that these are folks that are currently on the board, but they're being reappointed in this new capacity with respect to this new. That's commission. correct. There are three new people who are not on the board and they are involved. They are included in that number. Okay. And the remaining people are currently on and they're being reappointed. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Anything, anybody else? Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, is there a sign-up sheet for this? There is, and there's no one signed up. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this public hearing? All right, with that, we will close the public hearing. We will take a five-minute break and start the council meeting. Thank you. How are you today? What, what are you coming here for?
Okay. All right, I'm calling the 730 Town Council meeting to order. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Fay. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Winograd. And Mr. Williams. Here. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules to present two proclamations. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. All right. We will start with fire prevention safety. Hello. 
assistant chief since a galley. All right. So we, this is uh, our assistant uh, fire chief since a galley, and I'm going to read the proclamation uh, that we do for, for this week. Whereas U.S. fire departments responded to 357,000 home fires in 2017, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and home fires resulted in 2,630 civilian deaths in 2017, representing the majority, 77% of all U.S. fire deaths. And whereas the town of West Hartford's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. Whereas the 2019 Fire Prevention Week theme, Plan and Practice Your Escape, effectively serves to educate the public about the vital importance of developing a home fire escape plan with all members of the household and practicing it twice a year. And whereas a, fire, a home fire escape plan provides the skill set and know-how to quickly and safely escape a home fire situation. And whereas home fire escape plans should be developed by all members of the household and practiced twice a year to ensure that everyone in the household knows what to do in a real fire situation. And whereas West Hartford's residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on behalf of the Town Council and the residents of West Hartford, I, Mayor Sherry G. Cantor, do hereby proclaim October 6th through 12th as Fire Prevention Week in the Town of West Hartford and urge all residents to develop a home fire escape plan and, and participate in the many public safety activities and efforts of West Harvard's Fire and Emergency Services during Fire Prevention Week 2019. And I would love for you to say a little. <laughs> thank you. Thank you Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Cantor and the, the entire council and the Public Safety Committee for the support that they've given the fire department uh, throughout the years. We, uh, we really are appreciative of the, um, of the support that you give. And also, you know, when I first got in the fire service in 1972, the fire deaths were thir more than 13,000 a year nationwide. Um, to, so to be in a spot where we're down to, you know, 3,000, 3,400 a year uh, speaks well of our public, of the nation's fire service public education efforts and also um, the uh, receptiveness of the, uh, of, our, of our citizens and our residents. And in West Hartford, we're fortunate enough to have residents and citizens who are uh, very careful with their property um, very uh, mindful of the maintenance and smoke alarms and, and fire safety. So we are you know, fortunate to have a very low fire loss rate. So we hope that with continued public education and continued support from the residents and the council will be able to maintain that safe, uh, that same level of safety that we enjoy today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. A second proclamation. Hello, Helen. Our Director of uh, Human and Leisure Services, uh, Helen Rubino Turco, you just heard from. Whereas parks are an essential are essential to the physical, social, environmental, and economic health of a community, whereas the National Park Trust for Public Land, in conjunction with the natural, na uh, National Recreation and Parks Association and the Urban Land Institute, are leading a nationwide movement to ensure that there's a great park within a 10-minute walk of every person in every neighborhood in every city across America. Whereas over two 220 mayors, including West Hartford Mayor Sherry Cantor, have come together to support the 10-minute walk campaign and are increasing equity equitable park access, sorry, and equality through local policy changes, master planning efforts, and appropriate funding. And whereas special activities have been held this spring, summer, and fall in the town of West Hartford in support of the 10-Minute Walk Initiative, and whereas Thursday, October 10, 2019, is National 10-Minute Walk Day, and whereas a ceremony to celebrate the town of West Hartford's participation in the 10-Minute Walk will be held on Thursday, 10-10, 2019 at 10 a.m. at West Hartford Town Hall, followed by a ceremonial tree planting at the Trout Brook Trail, a linear park. Now, therefore, be proclaimed that on behalf of the Town Council and the residents of West Hartford, I, Mayor Sherry G. Cantor, do hereby proclaim Thursday, October 10th, 2019, as the 10 minute walk day in West Hartford. And Helen, I'm sure we'll have a few more words for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, 80% of West Hartford residents live within a 10 minute walk of a public park or playground, which is a, a phenomenal number for an inner city, uh, an inner suburb, uh, inner ring suburb of, of a city. Um, but we wanted to uh, spend this year focused on trying to get people from their couch to the park that is a 10 minute walk away. Um, so we did just uh, 
a number of initiatives, but um, the main one encapsulated numerous of our activities, and it's called Parks Bingo. And it runs until Halloween, so you still have time to play Parks Bingo. And for every bingo that you get, you get entered into a drawing for a, fleet, a free pair of running shoes or walking shoes from Fleet Feet. So I'm very pleased that, um, uh, and you can, more information is on Leisure Services website um, or through our department, um, any of our facilities. Um, I'm very pleased to um, have our mayor embrace this initiative. Last year, we didn't do very much. What we did was we updated the mapping and we got ourselves organized, but this year we've really launched an, a number of activities that involve not just leisure services and our parks department, but also public works, the library, um, as well as local businesses like Fleet Feet and local nonprofits like Friends of Fern Ridge Park or um, the West Hartford Garden Club. So it's really been um, a delightful uh, effort, uh, joint effort to support the 10-Minute Walk Initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, back to the agenda. Um, we will go to number two, Ms. Kiergan. and the public hearing minutes application 1060 Starkle Road. Second. Motions been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we will check if TC if people are signed up for public forum. They, uh, the sign-up sheet is blank. Is there anybody that would like to speak to something on the agenda that's not a subject of a public hearing? Okay. Uh, we have nothing on consent. Okay. Uh, so, number five, Ms. Kerrigan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move adoption of the ordinance amending parking regulations. I mean, restrictions. Sorry. Restrictions. Second. <laughs> Motion has been made and seconded. Here we want to just do a brief uh, summary, Mr. Hart, and then I think there are a couple further questions for you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <laughs> as we discussed in the, uh, the public hearing, the proposed ordinance is an outgrowth of a charge that the council gave to staff and our residents back in uh, 2016, and they've been working diligently, uh, diligently since that time. Under the proposed ordinance, there are two main components here. Um, one, it would allow the town clarify that the town has the, uh, the authority to limit parking to, uh, to certain sides of, uh, of the street. And that secondly, we would have the ability, I would have the ability as the traffic authority to restrict parking on certain streets to prohibit parking from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. The, uh, the standard rule throughout town at present is uh, the restriction runs from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. And then lastly, some years ago, we implemented an OMIT procedure that is administered by the police department. And that would allow someone to make a special request to gain an exception to the rule on a case-by-case -case basis um, within a particular period of time. That process, that program, was never officially allowed by ordinance. So this ordinance would fix that and uh, codify the OMIT system as well. Thank you, Mr. Hart. And um, this ordinance, uh, you had stated that the you uh, one of the things is this is specific to this um, area. I think there is some concern that uh, putting in um, uh, at this 11 uh, PM time frame would make this apply or could apply to everything, every area in in the um, in the town. I think there, there well, I, Mr. Sweeney, would you like to elaborate on your question? On the omit. On the, on the omit and the and the fact of the limiting the parking on the in uh, that would apply to the full town. I, I'm a little um, actually. Fuzzy. Sure. Uh, I mean, I can just go on. I'll start. Just um, I guess I'll just answer that part. So, <clears throat> for the omit process, 
what I'm seeing here is it's just you're just just make sure I'm following you here. You're just providing the ability for anyone to call in based on whether or not they're an owner or occupant, so renter, whoever <clears throat> um, becomes unavailable to them or their guest as a result of an unavoidable circumstance. Do we? We, we're not going to get into the weeds with that uh, with folks because I, I do know that that has become something that people have been when they call the police that has been asked of them what is whether it's an unavoidable circumstance so that is correct we're not looking to change the current system we're looking to essentially legalize the current system and I want to correct one misstatement I made earlier mayor I said that this ordinance would uh, give us the authority to limit parking to certain sides of the street. Actually, that authority already exists. <clears throat> this this ordinance would not establish that. It it's already exists. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Sweeney, did you have another question? Uh, on the previous you, section, yeah. Go ahead. I do. Sorry. Um, let me just pull it up here for you. Um, so I, I I really appreciate the community's input on this. I think it's. A, a, uh, you know, a, a very important issue in regards to public safety, having your own, uh, the respect of your front yard. Uh, I mean, I've heard it, I've seen it. I used to live in the area, so I get it. Um, I, I just, the the wording of this troubles me from a, a few, few places. One, the 11 p.m. number, I mean, it was kind of basically said here today, there is no scientific reason for why we're choosing 11 p.m. It's just what we settled on. I'm troubled with that because I don't know any other community that's doing that when we have this huge downtown area that is really working well for us. Um, I know that's not necessarily working well for you guys in regards to what's going on in your front lawn, but in regards to in interfering with that, I do just want to understand why we would be doing it. I just haven't seen anything when I asked for it at the public safety meeting. Mm -hmm. I've not been provided anything for that, so that that is a little troubling to me. Um, I think the other piece that I have an, an issue with um, is the the way this is w written. It looks as if, and it reads as if, and please stop me if I'm wrong, but this basically allows for you to do this in any neighborhood in the, in the town. And I don't think that's what the point of the, the, of the group that was set up was to address the certain circumstances surrounding the center. But this language allows for you to do this in any community. And West Harvard is a diverse community in the sense that we have people that work, you know, second and third shifts, of which they need to address that. It, that needs to be dealt with. They have we have areas that have uh, multifamily homes where people do push up against that 2 a.m. clock, um, and so I wouldn't want to see that extended to those places. And I just find that the language is a little bit too broad for my liking on that sense. So I would love to see us. <coughs> Also, potentially, if if the 11 p.m. number isn't a scientific number, I, I just see the end of the day being a better number than 11 p.m. Um, I would love to offer an amendment on that to just move it from 11 to 12. Um, so the twofold, and if there's a way to make this a little bit less <clears throat> broad in the sense of maybe designating these exact streets, because as a to the point that you made, it's just we want to just talk about this portion of the town and then potentially look about look and see if this is helping and working I think the other thing that was troubling in the testimony I heard today was there there isn't a real uh, policy outcome that we're looking for here it wasn't a very specific one I understand the um, the well-being and um, of people and, and feeling the safety in their home but a specific outcome to see if this is working would be great to see or have something that we're looking at that's a because when we do public policy it's I mean I've seen you expect to see some sort of desired outcome for a change of this magnitude so I don't know if there's a way to to draft this to make it to designate this area um, that's something that I would love to see and I'll throw that over to <coughs> Corp Council and the town manager I guess thank you mr. Sweeney thank you mr. Hart go ahead so let me start off I'm, I may not hit everything uh, that, that you asked. If, if I miss something key, please follow up. And then yep. Mr. Allaire can add on if, if he so chooses. So the, the selection of the 11 p.m. hour, as we talked about during the, uh, the public hearing, um, is, is there a, an exact scientific reason for that? No. I think it, was, it emerged from the conversation 
that that was uh, the conversion, if you will, from the restaurant crowd to the, uh, the late night crowd. So thinking that 11 p.m. might be reasonable uh, for most folks. Uh, second point I, I wanted to emphasize, we talked about how we rely on a shared parking model. And we do have uh, capacity available for employees and patrons, especially late night. So we have that off-street capacity is available. It's not as though the parking on these neighborhood streets is, uh, is essential for the uses in the center at, uh, at that hour of the day. How would we measure success? I think we would look to see to what extent our nuisance complaints have, uh, have fallen and, uh, and declined. And I think that would be one statistic. Uh, secondly, I, I would look to see to what extent there is an uptick in the uh, sponsored parking programs that we provide for employees. I think we already talked about how our outreach that we've conducted to date, we've got some additional subscribers because of that. That's a good thing. That's a safe place for those folks to, uh, to park. Do you have the discretion to amend this uh, on the floor? Certainly. Uh, you talked about restricting it to certain uh, neighborhoods in town. Um, Mr. Allaire can, uh, can disagree with me if, if, if he thinks necessary, but I, I believe you would have that ability. I don't think it's necessarily needed at, at this point in time. As traffic authority uh, under state statute, the traffic authority in any town has considerable discretion. Uh, our practice here, though, is that we only make changes, whether they are uh, improvements to a stop sign, stoplight, what have you. We only do that on the basis of, uh, of analysis or based on a uh, neighborhood concern. But to, to, to that rationale, if, we are only, if we're doing this based off of the input by this group that has put a lot of time and effort into this, and it's supposed to be focused on this one specific area, why does the language reflect a town-wide policy? I mean, that's what this does. Again, think based on the, uh, the testimony that was presented earlier, if this is successful for this particular neighborhood, if it re for example, if uh, we see a reduction in the number of nuisance complaints we receive, if, it, if it's successful, arguably it's something we would like to, we could try in other neighborhoods. Uh, you talked about um, neighborhoods that uh, host a number of multifamily units. I think we would be um, somewhat loath to implement something like this in those neighborhoods, those neighborhoods where they're relying. To, where that, they're, to that point, those neighborhoods are two, three streets away. But they're not immediately adjacent. These are primarily single-family home neighborhoods. Uh, okay. I, I mean, in regards to the center, there are immediately adjacent neighborhoods that are two to three family homes that are within the area. They're actually probably closer than Four Mile Road to the center. So, I mean, I think we, we are in that kind of space. I mean, this specific, what has been asked for by this group, and I totally understand what they're coming from, I, that makes sense to me. To, if we can call out specifically what they're asking for in a, quote, unquote, as Mr. McGovern said, a pilot program sort of thing, then that's, that's, I think that's what we should be looking at because that's what we asked for. We didn't ask for a town-wide ordinance here. So I would love to see if we can, if there's a way we could maybe just have a recess and look at some sort of um, language that, that could address that. Uh, I just think that that's more what we were asked, that was asked of this com committee, not a town-wide ordinance change to impact the entire town if designated by the town manager. I think that's what we're looking at. And I, th and I again, appreciate everyone's work on here. I just, this is not, I don't like the idea of us then designating power to, no offense to you, maybe somebody else, um, to change that. I think that's kind of where our, the council comes in. That's our responsibility to it's the role that we have. So I would love to see if we could play around with some language. I think that I would, you know, I'd be amendable to keeping the time if we could keep it to a location. Um, but there's just a couple of things that I think that we could easily iron out on this bef before we implement a townwide policy. Um, and then I think, Ms. I think, uh, and then in regards to the second paragraph, <clears throat> in regards to uh, unavoidable circumstances, I would just like to r remove the word of unavoidable to just put it into circumstances since at that point we are designating some sort of 
judgment call at that point to who, who at that point they have to call it into the police right so uh, again and I don't want this to be looked at as um, not appreciative of what folks are have done today I just think that we need to look at this if it is truly a pilot program and what the over the initial goal was to address this community's concerns let's address their concerns and let's work on something that does that and not do a townwide policy before we know how to implement the the outcomes of this said quote unquote pilot program that we we're going to look at today um, I, I think it's a great idea to look at and explore but it's not something that I'm comfortable with implementing on a townwide policy because as I said earlier, we have such a diverse community in regards to how people work, how they get there, how they travel, um, and I think it just would impact people, um, could impact people adversely. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. I know Mr. Winograd had a, a couple of comments, and I should have started, Mr. This a lot of this came out of Mr. Winograd or went through Mr. Winograd's committee. So, uh, and uh, also public safety, Mr. Uh, 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 thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I guess, um, I mean, I I am in support of this. Uh, ordinance um, given the but um, uh, some of the objections that council and Sweeney raised I, I think that procedurally if there are amendments that want to be offered I mean we can either do it through you know I mean I think it, it's procedurally appropriate to offer amendments to an ordinance and have those discussed and then voted on if need be prior to talking about the whole ordinance I'm sorry, I don't want to jump in. I mean, you've raised an issue. I don't want to sort of start back at the beginning of support for the ordinance as a whole, because I think we're we're losing the thread of the of the discussion if we do, do it that way. Yeah, um, in, unless it's better to bring it out and then have those discussions. It, just, it, it seems to me you start with. I mean, either <laughs> we started sort of with the amendments. I think we we would start with the initial proposal which has been uh, raised and seconded. I mean, then if there are on the floor amendments, those would be appropriate to come sometime after. I That's fine. There, this, there was a pretty fundamental, um, I thought, potential change or, or, or right. uh, question. Uh, so I wanted, Liam, I wanted Mr. Sweeney to bring that up before we Right, and the question makes sense. Discussion. I think we, we an answer to the question, but to the extent that the, the answer isn't satisfactory, um, uh, then I guess I'm not sure whether, you know, again, in our normal course, we don't usually have this complex a debate, um, that whether we should entertain uh, amendments first um, before going to the, the full or should we start with the sort of full thing and then Well, there's a couple other amendments. questions. So uh, let's just go through a couple of questions. Um, I know Mr. Williams had us a question and, and then we will sort of see whether we move on one and then you know, two amendments or two items. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, Councilman Sweeney, I, I appreciate your perspective. Um, tonight, I disagree with it um, for sort of some of the reasons you actually raise. So, you know, this process has involved a lot of stakeholders and has taken a lot of work from Mr. McGovern, Ms. Gorski, Mr. DeMay, residents, and that, you know, onto itself, a lot of work doesn't necessarily mean you pass something, but I think one of the frustrations folks have with government sometimes is that it, it doesn't move, it doesn't get things done. And I think there has been a lot of fact-based discussion about this particular neighborhood that has brought forth a proposal as to how to address it, which includes the 11, 11 p.m. number. I, I, I don't think it's, it's necessarily arbitrary because I think it's hooked to the parking availability. So. When we talk about other neighborhoods, be it uh, neighborhoods that have multifamily housing, or things of that nature, the, 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 the data on the ground is not going to be the same. And so the question becomes whether or not the council wants to give the discretion to the town manager to deal with those issues in other neighborhoods when it comes up or not. Like, do we trust the town manager and the staff to have the judgment to exercise it prudently in other jurisdictions. I think that's what your your issues your point is getting at. Or do we want to be a body that deals with parking times every time a neighborhood has has an issue with it? And so for me in my perspective, I would rather it be the former. I I I really like this 
ordinance myself. I think it's, it's a very thoughtful approach to a difficult issue. And I, I like and support the concept of giving the town manager the authority to deal with traffic issues as they arise throughout town because I think um, our, t our town staff being um, as involved in the community as it is, is a much better vehicle to deal with and address parking issues than we are. Um, I think what, what the problem we, we have is sometimes we don't, we're not able to spend the time in the community to understand and appreciate the issues the way that town staff is, is required to be. So I, I do think if we spend this evening restricting the ordinance um, to just being in, in the area that's specifically identified, I think the, the ordinance will be weaker um, for us. I think we can adjust the overall ordinance if the pilot program doesn't work out. And I also think if the same goes, my thought process for the, the time, because you know, if, we, if we put it to, to midnight or we move it forward to 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., we're still de dealing with a measure of discretion. So you know, I, I support the idea that this is a pilot, see how it works with the residents, the community, the businesses, and then we can move forward from there. But I, I would not support um, changing the language tonight um, after we've gone through this process. I think the process has gotten us to a point where we administer the proposal, see how it goes, because it is a pilot, and then we either expand it, restrict it, and deal with it from that perspective. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Dodge. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think I'm going to try and successfully agree with both Mr. Sweeney and Mr. Williams. Um, <laughs> I, had, uh, I had similar concerns to, uh, to Mr. Sweeney, and um, I think that, you know, if, if, if it was restricted to a neighborhood, um, this would be uh, sort of a no-brainer for me. Um, you know, my, I, I, I do share his concern that doing that this is giving the town manager the authority to do this on a town-wide basis. Um, but that's not to say that I think we as a council should be involved in this on a town-wide basis. I guess that my concern comes down more to uh, whether my concern would be when we look at the immediate problem that we're facing, uh, we had a very nice map that Mr. McGovern prepared for us. We, we, we have a lot of certainty in terms of immediately, I think we have predictability in terms of how Mr. Hart is going to proceed, at least with regard to uh, West Hartford Center. And the residents in West Hartford Center, the business owners have obviously uh, been very, very involved in this discussion. And you know, I, I, I don't have any concerns that sort of there hasn't been notice to people that this might be coming with regard to West Harvard Center. So my concern doesn't come down to you know, whether we should be involved townwide. I agree with Mr. Williams, I don't think we should. Uh, it comes down to whether when the town manager does this in other parts of town, uh, whether what kind of notice would be provided to the residents of a street where there was gonna be a new parking restriction. Uh, for instance, um, having said that, however, I, I, you know, I, I don't think that at this late hour um, coming up with some kind of a notice provision is prudent. Um, I don't think I don't think it's something that we should be doing at the table. And so it's something that I hope that, you know, perhaps uh, we could look at going forward, you know, we can always come back and, and amend the ordinance. And so if we find that there's an instance where we, we think maybe notice is appropriate, we want to put some kind of procedure in place so that residents on a street that might be affected by a future restriction uh, could be informed of that, then, then maybe that'd be appropriate. I think tonight it's not necessary because I, I, I think, you know, hopefully this isn't going to expand uh, particularly um, quickly. Um, you know, I, I, maybe not publicly, but privately sort of advocated uh, the repeal of the uh, 2 a.m. Uh, townwide parking ban. Um, and I, I would actually, I, I think repealing it paired with something like this makes a lot of sense because I, I think that in most of parts of the town, there's really no reason to have a 2 a.m. ban. And I don't think that there's many other suburban communities that have a 2 a.m. ban. Um, so I hope that some future time that we can perhaps look at that and especially having something like this on the books might give us a little bit more comfort um, examining that issue. Um, 
<clears throat> as far as far as the concerns about time, I think that sort of moving back the hour from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock is almost more arbitrary than 11 o'clock, than providing more discretion to the town manager. Um, if anything, I, I would perhaps consider allowing an earlier time, only because I would trust the town manager, um, as he went through the process with any neighborhood, uh, to, to, use, to use some discretion with that. And so I wouldn't support moving, moving the hour back to, to 12 o'clock. So you know, I, I guess to kind of sum up my concerns on this, um, I do plan on voting for the ordinance. I do have a concern about if we do start using this in other parts of the town, um, you know, making sure that we go through the same type of process where the residents are involved in the decision making. And I think that right now, uh, you know, in, in, in my three and a half years on council, I don't think I've ever seen a situation where the, where the town staff didn't engage in robust outreach. And so I think that we have to have a certain level of trust on that. Um, but if it is something that we want to revisit at a future date, um, I think that's something we could consider, um, you know, going forward. I, I do, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how, I, I, I do agree with Mr. Sweeney's concerns on the OMIT system in terms of uh, putting these sort of owner standards in there in terms of, um, you know, what what's unavoidable or, or what does it mean to have parking that's not available. I did actually have one instance um, on when I when I was uh, in my previous neighborhood and it was before I was on council, uh, where a police officer did not give me an omit because they didn't think that these circumstances were unavoidable, um, and so I you know I I think we should have an omit system. I think we should also explore the potential of in some neighborhoods um, perhaps allowing resident parking on the street. I don't know. I think that other communities have systems for allowing that. Uh, and I think that that's something that we explore that that we should explore, um, but I, I do think that as far as the omit system, I mean, right now the way it's drafted, you can you can only get it for three days. I don't think that somebody calling in should really be required to make much more of a showing beyond I'm asking for it and I live here. Um, so, those are those are my feelings. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Dodge. Uh, Mr. Williams, your mic is on. Just I don't know if you're okay, Ms. Fay. Thank you, Mayor Cancer. Um, I just have to refresh my memory because uh, you guys probably know I grew up in East Hartford. So I just remember when my dad, when uh, they lived in the house for 60 years, and we would all be home from college. We all had our cars or after college, and he would have to call the police officers the night before and say, hey, my kids are here. Um, they're going to be on the street. You know, driveway is only so big. And the police department said, fine. And their ordinance is from 2 to 5 a.m. So very similar to West Hartford. And there's probably more you know, restrictions or different things in the, in the business districts. But um, I think we have a livable, breathable, good parking situation and ordinance. I've never personally had a problem when my you know, driveway has been paved and I had to have the cars on the street for a day or two overnight. Um, it's been well accommodated. There was no issues. And to me, um, you know, it's really a quality of life issue. And you guys live in the center. And it's a great place to live. And um, I think we need to have a balance between business and uh, residences. It's a residential area, for sure. Uh, family area, for sure, with a lot of children. I walk around there a lot. So I, I think there's a way to balance it. Um, I think 11 o'clock is reasonable, for sure. And we do have parking in other places. You know, the mayor's made accommodations with the garage um, that works quite well. There's lots of garages, there's lots of parking, there's lots of lots. Um, and if you want to be a little bit further, you oh, now we've got the purple bus. I mean, you can take the bus in town. So I, I think this is reasonable. I, I do believe that residents deserve a quality of life, regardless of where they live. And um, I, I don't want to bring up a sore subject, because I know it was very painful for all of us, but this is not like uh, unlike uh, Los Imperios, where there was a lot of things that happened in the neighborhoods as a, as a result of um, unsavory activities happening late at night from a big bar or a club. So I, I think we need to maintain our residences and um, you know keep them pristine and safe. And you pay a lot to live near the center. And uh, I'm supportive of this. I, I've, I know another town that has very similar restrictions. They seem to work. 
Uh, I've never had a problem if I had to park on the street, which is very rare. And I, I think that's a good thing too, that you don't, you don't want cars lined up in your street overnight all the time and, you know, not be able to get safety vehicles through or ambulances or whatnot. So, um, I'm in support of the, the public and, and what you folks had to say. And I like this ordinance and I, I think, you know, ordinances can be amended if it doesn't work. And, uh, I certainly trust Mr. Hart to be able to use his discretion with his staff of where we would have to apply them down the road. You know, we have to be prepared for change in our town and growth and, and good growth. So I can see, you know, the new park corridor turning into another sort of center, retail, restaurant establishment, park road, um, other places where we may have to do something, well, not now, but down the road. So I, I, I would trust that this is flexible enough that we could implement changes if we need to. Thank you, Ms. Faye. Thank you. Uh, do you want to go? I feel like we've entered the filibuster hour. No. What, no. If we can get this to midnight, then we don't have to vote on it. It's, it's actually, you don't have to. Well, it's surprising. You know, in six years, we very rarely find an issue that receives so much attention and, and deep thought at the, the table that gets both sides engaged in having such a polite discussion uh, here at the table other than, well, not budget night, but um, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's been great. I mean, it's just really interesting conversation. When I came in tonight, I didn't think we'd elicit this much conversation uh, about this topic. But, you know, I think we have gone through a process and, you know, I think the, the goals or what we want to accomplish are basically defined. I agree that maybe the metrics of kind of evaluating that in the end may not be crystal clear, but I think it does come down to a, you know, a quality of life issue in and around the center. And as I think Mr. Dodge said at the beginning, you know, we want to, we want to get cars to go into those spots and not go out. And, and, you know, if, if that's the result, then we're going to have to, you know, address that issue as well, because that's not solving the problem. It's just moving the problem in, in, into a different, um, into a different area. So I'm, you know, because it is a pilot and because we've spent a lot of time working on these issues, I think it is a, you know, um, uh, you know, something that I can support at least, you know, to have it go through the pilot to see if it's effective um, and see what impact it has in and around the center. So um, with that, I'll end my filibuster. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Barnes. Mr. Winnerick, you want to go? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, this actually, this whole issue, um, it, 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 kind of personal to me. I grew up on Four Mile Road. Um, and grew up in the center, and actually I've told the story a lot of times about how um, I once got stopped by the police with a friend of mine because we were in the center at 9 o'clock at night on a Friday, and it was obvious that we were up to no good because there'd be no other reason for anybody 18 years old to be in the center uh, at 9 o'clock on a Friday because we probably weren't heading to the Edelweiss. Um, the, um, and when I, went, when I first ran for election four years ago, I remember knocking on the door of somebody on Woodrow who sort of pointed out the cars and said, please do something. Can we do one side of the street parking? Um, and I said, oh, that, that's an interesting idea. And I'm like thrilled that now we're actually getting to that and you've been, all been patient. Um, but uh, one of the um, uh, sort of worst things that happened to me after I got elected four years ago is we had a, it was my committee, community planning, and we had an, uh, a proposal for a zoning change in the center that we all looked at and said, this makes a lot of sense, and we moved it on, and we came to a public hearing, and some of you in the room, and quite a few more of you in the room, uh, gave us hell. And um, it was actually quite, uh, you know, a little bit like, you know, deer in the headlights look uh, from some of us, uh, speaking for myself, certainly. And, you know, we, we promised that we would, in fact, slow down a little bit. Um, because the goal, what we were trying to do there, was, I think, vitally important to the future of West Hartford. Uh, we need to do smart development in, in the center. Um, I'm proud of the incentive zoning ordinance we ended up passing. Um, and part of the reason we were able to pass it, and it took a th three tries to finally get it done, um, was because of the really responsible way that your community reacted to it. Um, it wasn't just a NIMBY kind of reaction. It was, how do we get involved? How do we jump in and make this better? And it, that was a great reaction. And uh, you came in and said, listen, we, like, like you said tonight, we want this center to succeed. We want business. We're here for a reason. And that was uh, quite a different reaction than other parts of the country get 
um, for you know some zoning changes. So I was really you know impressed and proud because I'd lived in the neighborhood of the reaction of uh, uh, of the neighborhood to um, what could be a pretty scary idea. Um, so we then you had your meetings and you trusted and we passed the zoning ordinance based in part with your support or at least you know not not strong opposition because you were trusting that we would honor the, the system we had set up. And now, a few years later, you're coming to us with the results of that system. And, uh, and it, you know, I think that's how it's supposed to work. You know, it's it very, it, the transparency, the community involvement. Um, and then I think that we then end up with um, enabling legislation, in effect, that we now, you know, enabling the manager to do in your neighborhood what is appropriate for your neighborhood, we think. Again, we'll, we'll try it out. But I think it is inappropriate to give you the powers to then, as other neighborhoods go through the same process, uh, if they make different decisions, you'll have some leeway to do the same thing. And I trust I, I, this is a model, not only a pilot program for parking, but also a model for how staff interacts with a neighborhood. Um, and that is just something that I think we should celebrate and, and endorse tonight. So I'm um, certainly supporting this. Um, in terms of the times, again, I think that you know, with, between 10 or, or 11 or 12, um, again, I think that goes within you know, the discretion, not 10, but, you know. uh, but, but certainly if it turns out like the metrics, you know, if, it, if it isn't working, um, then you have that ability to move it. But again, I think we should trust in that process uh, of community involvement. And we certainly, certainly myself on council, um, that's what I expect uh, for other neighborhoods, that it won't be uh, you know, arbitrary decision making uh, by our staff, but it's going to be that kind of involvement. And if that's what happens, I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, and just one other thing, in terms of the balance that we, that we do between the businesses and the residents, I think that is vital. Um, and I, I, I know that nobody came to testify opposition. I haven't heard the opposition. We haven't gotten letters. I think it's been out there. I think um, our staff getting out there, uh, Kristen, going out and talking to people, um, if it were you know, that devastating, I think, you know, we'd have heard it. And we usually do hear from them. So I'm hoping certainly that nobody was silent and is at home simmering and, you know, or hearing about this for the first time um, and didn't come forward. But I, I, again, I think we need to trust in that process. So thank you um, to the staff and to the neighbors for this great collaborative process. And um, I, let's hope it works. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Winograd. Um, Quick recess, I can check with Mr. Olaire on. Sorry. Can I just have a, a brief recess to check with Mr. Olaire on, on an amendment that we're Sure. I'm going to have actually Mr. Davidoff start uh, talking because I would probably <laughs> go. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, right. <laughs> 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 sorry. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So since this sort of has something to do with zoning, I guess I can uh, have some type of discourse. No, uh, seriously, in uh, 2016 is when we started talking about this. So it just illustrates how slow the wheels of government work. But it just shows this evening that it did work because we had a collaboration between town staff, uh, various departments, uh, community planning, economic development, uh, town planner, uh, public safety, engineering, public works, and our residents who were uh, directly affected in the center to try to find solutions that uh, make sense. And tonight we're talking about celebrating our success as a community. And I don't think we should lose sight of that because if West Hartford Center was not a vibrant area, uh, people may not choose to live there. Uh, we probably wouldn't have a parking problem. People wouldn't be working there. So we should celebrate that success. And what we're doing this evening is managing that success to protect the quality of life that our residents expect when they purchase a piece of property um, in that particular neighborhood. I've had the uh, privilege of uh, going on some police uh, ride-alongs. Uh, twice in that neighborhood at uh, various hours, and I have seen excessive noise at that hour. I've seen behavior 
that is shameful and uh, not worth reporting in the newspaper. Um, and it sort of puts a blemish on our community to see how some individuals take their um, independent liberty to just do as they please without any respect or regard for the personal property rights of others. Not all, but there are isolated cases that, that, that happens. So this evening we're going to give the manager what I believe is a good plan as the traffic authority to um, tell people 11 o'clock at night is really, you know, in our vibrant center, not the time that you ought to be having the conversation out in our residential neighborhoods, bring it more towards our commercial district. Um, let's not have that type of behavior out there. Um, and uh, I, think, I think that's good. I think that's a, a step in the right direction. And as I've seen over the years that I've been on the council, if we're not getting it right, we'll fix it again. And I, I think that's important because what I think this entire experience has taught us is that we're listening to our residents, we're doing our homework and researching for creative solutions. I think this, this is a very creative solution and it's forward thinking and it's not written in stone because nothing we do is written in stone and, and it can change because circumstances can change. So I, I think my time is up and I think that uh, Mr. Sweeney has uh, spoken to uh, Corp Council Allaire and uh, got the other portion of his amendment ready. But I'll just end with this. And, and that is, I didn't think when I came here this evening that we would be spending almost an hour talking about this particular ordinance. But I'm glad we did because what it demonstrated is that there's a lot of thoughtful uh, discussion and reasoning and common sense that goes into our deliberations, no matter how small or how big the issue may be before the council. So for all those reasons, I will be supporting the ordinance this evening. Thank you, Mr. Davidoff. Mr. Sweeney, you ready? Or yes, Sorry, uh, I, have, uh, I have two amendments. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have uh, Mr. O'Leary read the first. Uh, it, it is, of my opinion, based on the the, the outcome of the committee and the geographical area, I think that we could accomplish this with his language. Um, I, I will propose it. Um, I, just before I get into that, I just, again, the way this is written is a town-wide policy. It is not a pilot program. It has not been designated as a, in any such way here outside of just language. So that is where I'm coming from and the concern that this is a town-wide policy and I take that very ser seriously in regards to what Mr. Davidoff said and, 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 and I, completely take into the account of the neighbors issues i just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing for the entire town because what you guys have done it only encapsulates the issues that you guys see and i want to make sure that um from my perspective that we do this better on the town wide so mr uh, o'leary if you could just read the amendment so just just to be clear where we're starting from when we draft an ordinance the general principle is that you do make it Town -wide. You make it of general applicability because for the most part, the principle is that our ordinances should apply equally to everybody. Uh, there are times, for example, in zoning ordinances where you deliberately divide the town into districts, but within those districts, wherever they're placed, the regulations are uniform. And with that in mind, we drafted the ordinance to be townwide. Um, what I heard from Mr. Sweeney tonight and started playing around with as, as he was talking is the idea of sort of standing that on its head and starting with this area and doing, treating this in essence as a pilot. And so the, what you have in front of you, um, the amendment um, to subsection uh, A1C of the ordinance, uh, we would add at the beginning of that subsection, within the area bounded by the north side of Farmington Avenue, the east side of Raymond Road, the south side of Boulevard, and the west side of Woodrow Street, comma, small p, parking, and then it goes on with the text that's there now, so that it, it only applies within that rectangle. And that, that's a, a loose rectangle, but it covers the areas that seem to be um, bounded by the map that, that, that uh, uh, 
uh, Mr. McGovern had had submitted to you, um, and and that's that's the text of the First Amendment. So I offered the amendment on the resolution. Okay. Would someone like to second? I think um, so if then it fails, right? Is that right? Yes. Yes. So. Now I th I th and I I personally well, well I actually want to go to well we can talk about it again. But Ms. Kerrigan, why don't you go with your we'll <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, sorry. Um, but that, but that, that, that's, that's sorry. We had a, right. You had another amendment. Yes, I'm sorry. Another, another the oh. the other amendment is on the um, the provision for the case by case exemptions. So. Subsection D. Yeah, subsection D. The amendment would um, essentially strip out um, everything after may be granted. So it would read, <clears throat> the West River Police Department shall establish a procedure by which case-by-case -case exemptions from the provision of sub subparagraphs B and C of this section may be granted. So basically not calling out of any, there, there'd be nothing in here that would allow for discretion. It would allow for if you call and you want it, you get it. You get you get it granted, but we allow for the West Everett Police to develop this procedure. Um, so, wait. Can you just say where it ends again? I'm sorry. It ends at may be granted. So period? subparagraphs B and C of this section may be granted. Period. That would be it. So you don't you remove you you're basically removing for the the, the, the time the period time, of three days the time and then you talk about who who what where and granted. So um, I is it prop, I'm offering the amendment. I'll, I'll, I'll second. I want to discuss this a bit more. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll show you. Here. Go ahead. You would you, would you like to um, talk about it a bit? Right. Yeah. That's what I want to go ahead. No, no. I, I think that um, I again I second it so that we can have a discussion. Um, so the your objection to the so you're li limiting the three-day duration limit is that yeah and, and the, the language in there about so you so you're expanding what exemptions could be made right and and the guess of the result of a, and the sorry, sorry. <laughs> for, for SC, uh the unavoidable circumstance issue just to eliminate that as a as a requirement that they do it yeah so they the the police would stop discretion to set their own standards, which may include right. that. I guess so. I guess my question is, well, do you want? Um, what is this right now? Is this, they may that they such exemptions may be granted to the owners. Who's also be well? Right now, I mean, I would I would read the current the <coughs> may in the ordinance as being. Um, I'd add an only in there, right? I mean, so that right currently only. Exemptions may only be granted, even though it doesn't say that. I, uh, that's the way I would read it, because it's giving permission to do so. So as written, it could only be granted to owners or occupants beca who become available in unavoidable circumstance. That's how it's oh, I mean, currently this, written. So what, you're, you're the, pulling that out so yeah. that they could expand. It, yes. The ex yes. So okay. you could expand it to if you have a guest coming, they could, you could call in, they could call in. Again, of unavoidable, like <coughs> defining what unavoidable circumstances. I think if we're going to, you know, go down this and, and mm -hmm. to, to the point that uh, Councilman Dodge gave, you know, if you need to move your car into the street and you live there or you have a guest there, you should be able to do that um, without receiving a ticket. If you are, again, you're calling the police department to notify them that you're doing so. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I tend to agree that the police ought to be. That are more liberal on this uh, to the extent possible. So, to, if if your if your point is that this is actually perhaps making it more restrictive than than even currently is done, um, I'd agree that we shouldn't make that more restrictive. So, uh, the language makes it yeah. less less restrictive. <laughs> that amendment offered makes it less restrictive than what currently is. Proposed. Mr. Dodge. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I support the amendment. As I said, I don't think that the police should get into a question of whether the circumstances that you need to have a car on the street are avoidable or um, unavailable. Again, again, I can talk from personal experience where it, it was questioned <laughs> at one time. 
Um, and so, and so I think, you know, basically if, if you're a resident in this town and, uh, you or somebody who's a guest in your, your home, um, needs to park on the street for some reason, um, you, you should be allowed to. So I view this as making it more permissive. I plan to support it. Uh, my only question was for, um, I, don't, I, I guess this is for Mr. Allaire. It's just uh, the, the sub D here affects C, um, which is giving the town manager a new uh, power. Should it be the police department developing this this um, procedure, or should it be the town manager? The police department is who you call if you want the omit under the current procedure, and so. When I originally, the, the subsection D was originally the standalone ordinance, and, and we added the, the parking in west of the center to something I'd already drafted for that other purpose. It was simply intended to codify existing practice, and, and maybe it would help. Given the debate that we've had, it might help to have a little bit of historical perspective, not hysterical, but historical uh, perspective. The In the 1950s, the police department implemented a regulation, which procedurally they had the power to do under our charter and ordinances, banning parking between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. It was a public safety rationale that at 3 in the morning, when a police officer is patrolling the street, any car on the vehicle is now a suspicious vehicle. And it has worked for all of these years. Um, sometime in the late 80s, just after I came here, uh, somebody called up and was very angry that they'd gotten the ticket and wanted to know, well, what's the legal authority for this? And I had to go find it because it's not published. And that really became the issue. We, we amended the ordinances to make it an ordinance violation because people couldn't find it. It was a, a regulation on file with the town clerk, but not in our published ordinances. So we created the ordinance saying no parking between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. From the 50s on, because it was a regulation of the police department, there was also an omit program that the police department implemented to waive its own regulation. That never got picked up and carried forward with the ordinance. So time passes, 2019, somebody, I think it was actually Assistant Chief McHugh, raised with me, could we incorporate the omit process into the ordinance since the two to five is in there? And that's, that's how we got to this point. The idea was not to change the procedure. The idea was to make sure that the police department had an ordinance basis for saying that they could have the procedure that they've had since the 50s in one form or another. So if, if the concern now is that the procedure that's in place is too restrictive, because I tried to draft it to make it mirror what the procedure is now, then there's certainly no reason you can't do that. I would point out that the reason for the three days, if you call on the third day and say, I need another three days, um, and I can vouch for this from personal experience, uh, they will do it. But they give you three days at a time so that cars don't get left on the street indefinitely. You know, your, your engine dies, and now it's, it's on the street. Okay. Uh, indefinitely. So I, th that's that's the reason for that. As far as the unavoidable circumstances, it's open to debate. I, I, I hope that's the title of your first book, yeah. <laughs> Retirement Two, is a brief history of West Hartford parking ordinances. Um, the uh, yeah, I, I have no problem with the, with the three day with the with the three day restriction. I think it makes sense. I think obviously we don't want people parking on the street indefinitely. I think it's this other piece where, you know, what's unavoidable circumstances. Um, I think that could be applied arbitrarily. I think in my experience it has. Um, so I support the amendment. My question about whether it's the town manager or the police department is probably a distinction without a difference. So thank you, Mr. Dodge. Mr. Hart wanted to speak, so, so I'm cutting you off. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. And that, that's the point I wanted to make. As I heard the amendment, I, I didn't hear the, the three-day limit on duration. I think having some limit would be important. Uh, I just took a complaint recently from a constituent about an out-of-state uh, mm -hmm. car that had been parked in front of their home for some period of time. It, it did, uh, the owner of the car or the, the driver had received a uh, proper omit, but it Again, I think having some cap on duration would be important. 
Thank you, Mr. Hart. I, and I'm just procedurally, this is a, as Mr. Barnes said, would this apply townwide? And yes, it would. This would not be restricted to this just this neighborhood that we're talking about. Correct. Correct. The, the omit process is townwide. Correct. Right. So to substantially change it in a way, would we then need to notice and would it require a separate public hearing? I mean, would, uh, obviously, uh, it's, if you were to take out the, the limit, it, it does change the duration. It does change the. M Madam Mayor, the may, I, may I just withdraw the amendment and then re-offer another amendment that p puts in the three days to accommodate the issues that the town manager has in here? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, it reads, as as was uh, the West Harvard Police Department is hereby empowered to establish a procedure by which case-by-case -case exemptions from provisions of subparagraphs B and C of the subsection may be granted for periods up to three days in duration. Yeah, that's what I just read. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, th I think... Um, oh, sorry, sorry, and sorry, withdrawal again. <laughs> West Harvard Police, and I'm just changing shall be empowered. Sorry, guys. I, I, don't, I don't follow me. The West Harvard Police Department shall be empowered to establish a procedure by which case-by-case -case exemptions from the provision of subparagraphs B and C of the, succession, of the subsection may be granted for periods of up to three days in duration. It removes the basically the last part of the... Well, it, it does... Uh, uh, why, why shall instead of the is hereby? Shall by. Is hereby. You just it, sure either it's. It I mean, just it's an extra change that. Except I just I just wrote it right, off, okay. off the top of my head. Um, shall was in his original yeah. amendment. Yeah. Oh, it oh, was. It, wasn't it was in my original okay. amendment too. So uh, I offer the amendment. Thank you, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, can I speak to it for a second? Yes. So I, I do, um, I, I'm a little, it's a little unexpected that we would uh, spend a lot of time on this, but um, I, I do think this is something that we need to talk more about, um, but not at, in this, I, and I think we would need to notice it, and, and this is a policy change that uh, impacts our whole, whole community. Um, I actually like the language, all of it, because I do, I do think it gives the um, police some discretion. Um, but I would say, rather than result of unavoidable circumstances, the only uh, amendment I would make is in, in, as a result of independent circumstances. Individual, so I'm sorry, not independent. Individual circumstances. I would withdraw my amendment to take your amendment to this. Okay. Is there, um, I don't know what's going on with my, um, is there a second? Se oh, second. Motions yeah. remain and seconded. Uh, is there, uh, so the amendment's on the table. Should, can we vote on the, that amendment? Mr. Williams. I would just say, and I, I would defer to corporation counsel on this, but I think when we use words uh, in statute, or uh, ordinance, we just have to be careful. I don't know what independent means versus unavoidable individual. or individual. Um, so I think you're right, the second part of this paragraph is very important because otherwise the police department doesn't have any discretion to, to enforce an exemption and an exemption without the ability to use means that the rule is swallowed. So I, I think we might wanna if this is an issue that the town council is concerned about, I think we need to look at this particular language more in committee or what have you. And I said that, and then I actually went back on what I just said. So I, I do agree. I think this is something that we need to look at separately and is going to be a discussion that we're going to have to amend this ordinance for after we fully evaluate the two to five because I, I think there's a significant interest at the table to look at that again. Um, I'm not happy with the language. I don't, I agree that it's not unavoidable. I will say that the police, but I don't think at this table, at this time, without discussing this particular policy, we're ready to make an amendment. Just on that note, and I will put a button on this, I, I swear. Um, it, 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 if we are going to say that we can't make changes here today, I mean, I, I just find that to be kind of counterintuitive to what we're talking about in general. We, we're making, I made requests of staff 
in this process, of which were not provided to me via email. And then we had them, we had this on the agenda. Uh, so of which I am dealing with it in the same way that everyone else is. And to, to, you know, that is where it is today. But I, we are here because there was communication that was formally made in, in a public hearing of which I did not hear anything back from. We could have solved this prior to this had we had that communication provided to me or to anyone that was at that public safety meeting. It was not. So I, I'm just saying if we are talking about making decisions today because we're being rushed or we don't want to be rushed, I would just encourage folks when those requests are made by counselors at public hearings or co committee meetings that, that they be followed up with. So how, uh, how about offering this? Or that we, uh, um, we vote on this resolution and we also refer a portion of it back to committee um, if that could be done to review this section in committee. So procedurally, if, if, I'm, if I'm following this, we're going to vote or you're going to vote on the, uh, the ordinance unamended and then you would do a, um, you suspend the rules, have a separate resolution uh, to refer subsection A1D back to committee for further discussion. Yes. Mr. Barnes. Or alternatively, is it possible just to pull it back, take it back into committee, address whatever issues have been raised around this table and come back with a new amendment and have a vote on that amendment as opposed to taking it piecemeal? I, I thought about that and um, we are at, at rushing towards a um, change potentially in council and I'm afraid that it would set us back for uh, changes that have been in process for two years and I'm just a little concerned about that process because of the notice of the public hearing and the public hearing and, and that would be my concern. So I think this could accomplish both. Okay. So the, that concern would be delay but procedurally would there be anything that would prevent us from doing that basically tabling this and bringing it back? I'm not sure you'd, well, um, let me think about it. Procedurally, you could continue the public hearing mm -hmm. and table the item, or you could close the public hearing and vote down the item without prejudice as to bringing it back as a new ordinance. Um, either of those processes, yes, you could do. Um, I think the, the mayor asked a, a question earlier about would some of these amendments be substantive enough uh, and what she's, what she's getting at is there's a charter requirement that basically says if you make a substantive amendment during the hearing process as you're doing or debating tonight, if, if that in my ruling was uh, substantive, you'd be required to re-notice and republish for a new hearing anyway. So. Procedurally, it might not make, depending on the amendments that were being offered, it might not make a difference timing-wise uh, because the same problem that the mayor's raising about the new council coming in would probably mean that you're, you're looking at a, a new hearing sometime in December anyway. Um, I, I think what, what we may see happen in that interim is if you don't adopt the ordinance tonight, the town manager can't implement the signage until you do, and we're heading into the holiday season. And it may be an issue for parking between now and Christmas if, if we don't have another hearing until December. Okay, um, Mr. Winograd, oh, Mr. Dodge first, okay. okay. I guess it's sort of a two-part question. Um, to Mr. Allaire, if we were to simply strike D so that we could deal with it separately at some future date, would we be able to act on the rest of the amendment or, or on the rest of the, the ordinance tonight? Um, and would that affect the police the department's current ability to offer omits? Yes, you could strike D, and I would rule that that's not substantive because it's within the scope of if you had voted the ordinance down. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, you could strike D. How it would affect the police department issuing omits, I honestly don't know. 
Um, I haven't talked to anybody in the department since I first drafted this several months back. Uh, I would imagine that they will continue doing what they're doing right. now. I mean, they're doing it now without right. the language. So, so I, I guess, Madam Mayor, if, if you were amenable to it, I would offer an amendment to simply strike the refer it back to committee and then we can vote on the ordinance. Uh, if it accomplishes the same thing, I'm absolutely fine with that. So, well, so if that amendment's on the table. So moved. Second. Oh, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, we can do not a roll of call the vote for the amendment. So, so, so the amendment is to strike section D. All those in favor? Oh. Sorry. I just want to make sure that I understand the, the, the result of that. So we're saying because it's currently not in an ordinance, they're going to continue to do what they're doing. We strike D, take it back to committee, and discuss however to address this, mm -hmm. and then provide an amendment at the future date, right. whatever it is. Right. But yeah. we're not changing the practice town-wide. They're going to continue to do what they're doing. Yes. Because I think it's an important enough issue to warrant further discussion before in this context making this important decision exactly. as part of this discussion right so we're all on the same page we're no no and, it, and and i completely agree with you mr burns I, I think that's why it makes sense to to take it out tonight um you know and it goes back to our discussion of this is a big deal it's a town-wide policy uh, I think that, you know, if we're going to look at the OMIT system, that that actually does merit some further discussion. Um, I think it's frankly a separate issue from what these poor folks are now here until 9.15 for uh, tonight. And, and, and so I, I, I think, you know, let's separate it out uh, and we can look at the future. Okay. That's was my – all set? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. So now we will have this amended – do we have another comment? No. Okay. All right. Um, I think we left off Ms. Kerrigan's comments on the rest of the remainder of the uh, ordinance. Whoa, why are we here? <laughs> um, wow. Just add another year on to your, your park process. Um, I am supporting this parking ordinance, um, which I kind of laugh because it's not about parking at all. I mean, if it was about parking, I don't think you would be here. It's about the quality of life, as all the counselors have, have referenced. Um, it's about you living in a neighborhood that used to close at 10, and it sounds like it's open <coughs> at 10 and going on until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. So now your front yard is kind of like being in a college dorm, you know, on a Friday night. So I appreciate your patience uh, with this. I'm not too sure I would be quite as patient as, as you have been. Um, so it's really not about parking. It is about quality of life. Um, I want to thank the staff, Mark McGovern, um, Kristen uh, Korski, uh, Todd Dumay. Um, that's a quite amount of time you've invested in, in energy and making sure that everybody gets what they, they need and want, which is which is really difficult. Um, the police that were involved and, and everyone else, so thank you for that. And I do want to, um, here he is, Councillor Dodge, I, I'm so sorry that you are leaving, uh, not for that moment, but you know, for your, you're not running again, um, because I do agree that our town needs to look at this two to five uh, window, because I live on Arnoldale Road, and when there's four people living in a house with one driveway, and everyone has their own little shifts. I'm always parking on the street one time or another, and it is a burden, quite frankly, to have two to five. And I'm not suggesting that in your neighborhood, because we're not exposing ourselves to the partying uh, that you folks have. So thank you for your patience, and I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kerrigan. Any other comments on this? Okay. So uh, first I want to thank Todd, who's still upstairs and probably will be for a while. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, Mark and Kristen for their incredible work on, on this. This has been a real commitment. Thank you to the neighbors, um, the, whole, the whole group of you, and I hope you pass on our thanks. Um, because we did start this a while ago, 2016, uh, and we understood that we, you, had, you had priorities, but we also w need to make sure that our um, sent vibrant West Hartford Center that often defines West Hartford outside of West Hartford, um, not inside West Hartford, but um, but it, it but it, uh, it 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 we want we treasure it and we want to preserve it um, and it won't work if the neighborhood around it is not happy and if it's it's this battle. So you took a step back and allowed us to to keep moving forward a, a little bit with our vision. On the, on the professional development of the center, and we have more work to do on that. While you continued to meet and talk about the priority and the quality of life, and I completely agree with the deputy mayor that it's not about parking. This is really a quality of life issue. 
um, although parking is the vehicle, pun intended, uh, to, <laughs> to, uh, you know, to, to allow you to, a change in the, in the quality of life. But we are really in tune with the businesses and how this will impact our businesses. I do think that w with the parking inventory that we have, uh, and we can be flexible, we have done a lot of outreach and Kristen especially has done outreach to try to work with businesses and how we can keep that um, viability and affordability for workers uh, uh, and convenience. So I really um, am happy to be at this place and that's why I really didn't want to extend this further because I feel like you've waited a long time for this night to, to happen. Um, it, it's not in stone and this may be changing over time. Uh, so I, I really think uh, we're in the right place. Um, this is an example of how West Hartford works. Might be slow, but we think it's right. <laughs> um, uh, we have, again, to preserve the, the success of the center with the balance with your, uh, our whole, actually, our whole community's quality of life and safety. So uh, this is a unique neighborhood. I don't think this, your story applies in many places throughout the town, maybe in a couple other spots, but not a lot. Um, I trust that the town manager and town staff will take this, all of these changes extremely seriously. Um, we do trust in that. We know the outreach that, and the commitment that they've made already and will continue to to do so. So with that, I will be supporting um, this uh, amended uh, ordinance. So, all right. Can we do a roll call, Ms. Abra? Uh, we Bra have to make a motion for the amended ordinance. Motion to approve the ordinance as amended. Motion to approve the ordinance as amended. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. No. Mr. Barnes. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Cantor. Yes. Mr. Davidoff. Yes. Mr. Dodge. Yes. Ms. Fay. Yes, and Ms. amen. <laughs> Ms. Kerrigan. Yes. Mr. Sweeney. Yes. Uh, Mr. Winograd. Yes. And Mr. Williams. Yes. Thanks. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for, um, really, thank you very much for all of you out there that have endured this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, where are we? 5B. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move adoption of an ordinance adopting a revision and recodification of the code of the town of West Hartford, Connecticut, providing for code amendments and the repeal of certain obsolete and conflicting ordinances. Second. Motion's been made a second. Mr. Hart, can you do a, a very brief uh, explanation <laughs> of this? Oh, this is, as was explained during the public hearing, this is something that's statutorily required every 10 years. We're a little bit behind, uh, but we're looking to uh, accomplish this. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Uh, and this was, uh, an, is an ordinance, so we have to take a roll call. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Ms. Cantor. Yes. Mr. Davidoff. Yes. Mr. Dodge. Yes. Ms. Fay. Yes. Ms. Kerrigan. Yes. Mr. Sweeney. Yes. Mr. Winograd. Yes. And Mr. Williams. Yes. It's unanimous. Wonderful, we're on a roll. Uh, five C. <laughs> Ms. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't know whether I'm, it's on or off. Um, I move adoption of an ordinance establishing a West Hartford Prevention Council. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Mr. Hart, brief explanation. Thank you, Mayor. As explained during the public hearing earlier tonight, we have an ordinance on the books that dates back to 1989. It's in need of a, an update in order to streamline things, uh, reduce the number of members to make it more consistent with uh, today's needs. So we're seeking your support on this ordinance as well. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Uh, okay, roll call, Ms. Lebrow. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Ms. Cantor. Yes. Mr. Davidoff. Yes. Mr. Dodge. Yes. Ms. Fay. Yes. Ms. Kerrigan. Yes. Mr. Sweeney. Yes. Mr. Winograd. And Mr. Williams. Yes. I just want to also say a quick thank you to Helen Rubino Turco for her uh, focus on this. And this is a very, very important um, service that this council provides. Okay, uh, 5D. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move adoption of a resolution authorizing the execution of an easement in favor of Gastro Park Holdings LLC. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. And we did just receive um, the. Re uh, uh, the unanimous vote from TPZ. So we are, uh, that is decided, it's part of the record. Um, and we'll, uh, all those in favor? Um, um, oh, Mr. Hart, would you like to explain that? <laughs> I'd be happy to. Uh, council will recall earlier last month the, ta the TPZ approved the applicant's 
Gastro Park Holdings LLC's application for a special use permit. Um, it was conditioned on a couple of things, one of them being obtaining an easement uh, to locate a sanitary sewer line uh, through three different properties, one of them owned by the town. So you refer this as you had to do to TPZ uh, for review, and they've come back with a favorable report. Thank you, Mr. Hart. It's hot off the press. They just did that tonight. So, um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Uh, and then uh, 6A. Yes, carry on. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move we set for public hearing on November 12, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Legislative Chamber and refer to TPZ, DRAC, and CROG, an application filed on behalf of Newington West Farms TMC LLC, owner of 1553-1559 New Park, I mean New Britain Avenue, sorry. Uh, special Development District uh, number 103, the requested amendment is for architectural modifications to the facade and existing pylon sign and for the removal of certain prior um, SDD conditions of approval regarding use restrictions. Associated landscaping improvements are proposed. A uh, second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. 6B, Ms. Carey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move we set for public hearing on November 12, 2019 at 7.20 in the Legislative Chamber and refer to TPZ, a resolution authorizing the town manager to execute a lease with the Universalist Church. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item 6C. Ms. Thank Carey. you, Madam Mayor. I move we uh, adopt a resolution establishing an annual salary range for certain unclassified positions. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Mr. Hart. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we reviewed this item with the Finance and Budget Committee last week. Council will recall that you authorized the establishment of three part-time positions for this fiscal year. Two of the three uh, did not have an assigned pay range, so we are seeking approval uh, to establish a pay range for those two positions. It's an emergency management position as well as a recycling coordinator position. Um, the salary ranges that we're proposing are based upon an internal comparison as well as a comparison against uh, external salary data positions in place in other towns. And if, if approved, we would be able to operate within the, uh, the approved budget with both of these proposals. And we're seeking your support. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Mr. Barnes. Um, I just wanted, consistent with my no vote on the budget and opposing the addition of, of new positions, I'm going to vote no. Instead of just voting no, I just wanted to put on the record why uh, I'm voting no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Uh, motion carries. All right. 6B. Uh, oh, 6C. Uh, and I think we are. Report. Come in. Uh, reports from town manager. Start. Thank you, Mayor. I know the hour's late. Uh, my report's loaded in board docs. I would encourage you to read it at your leisure. Two quick points I want to make. Uh, the American Legion was considering holding a Firefighter of the Year event uh, this week. I uh, noted that that does conflict with an important religious holiday. So that um, celebration that award ceremony will be scheduled to a later date. You may have received an email on this within a day or two. So please disregard. It's not happening this week. Uh, we'll be following up. Uh, they'll be scheduling it for later this fall. And then secondly, I will miss your next meeting. I will be at my, uh, my national conference uh, for ICMA, and I'll provide the Finance and Budget Committee on a report regarding my attendance at its next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Um, announcements. I have a few. Uh, cast your vote for Best of West Hartford. Uh, this will take place on Monday, November 4th at Fleming's. Um, and I think the voting ends this week, so make sure you, you go to weha.com and you cast your vote. Um, WHPS, so that's West Hartford Public Schools, is seeking mentors. Think of mentoring um, things that changed your life and become a mentor and change a life. Uh, the 101 workshop will be held on Tuesday, October 27th, 5 to 6.30 at Conrad High School's REACH program, located in the high school, in, uh, behind the high school in a separate building. You can make a difference. Uh, Carol Wilkes at 860-231-6009. A uh, 10 minute walk day, you heard in the proclamation, will be 10 10 at 10. Um, and we will be joined by, um, uh, I don't know, whatever.
summer. It'll be, it'll be great. Uh, later at 1 p.m., join West Harvard Senior Center Fitness Center uh, Supervisor Catherine, who will lead a walk to Westmore Park. Autumn Flea Market will be held by Elmo Community Center on, on Saturday, October 10th from 9 to 2. Uh, Shana Madel is playing at Park Road uh, Playhouse on Park. Um, from October 30th to November 17th. It's a powerful drama about survival and years after separation brought on by the Holocaust. It's a wonderful show. I've seen it. Mamma Mia by West Hartford Community Theater, uh, the popular jukebox musical based on the songs of ABBA. Uh, will be performed at Hall High School on November 15th, 16th, and 22nd, and 23rd at 7.30, and November 17th and 24th at 2 p.m. Tickets are on sale now and can be purchased at their website. Uh, any other announcements? Oh, Leon has one. Okay. Hi, Leon. Uh, oh. Madam Mayor, I, I think I wanted to remind you, uh, for those who uh, celebrate in the Jewish faith, I wish everyone a very happy and healthy uh, New Year, and may your fast be easy uh, in the days coming ahead. And uh, I know the mayor shares those sentiments. I do. I, w I wish everyone a happy, sweet, peaceful New Year. And I actually went to the Nepalese New Year uh, Festival last night, and I wish also uh, a happy uh, Dashan uh, Nepalese New Year. Okay. Um, and uh, reports from Corporation Council. Mr. Allaire, I know. I'd, I'd like to start by announcing my powerful trilogy of books <laughs> upcoming. <laughs> The first of which is going to be a lair on critters. The second of which is going to be a brief history of parking regulation in West Hartford. And the third is going to be entitled, No, Quorum Does Not Mean a Majority of Those Present in Voting. And by the way, think about that one for a second. That's a real definition that was in a regulation where someplace. Fascinating. Um, yes. We, we, we do need an executive session to discuss two matters of pending litigation for the media in the room, we will not be doing a vote afterwards, so I'm not going to be asking you for a vote, so. Okay, um, motion to, I make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, we'll see you next.